Well, greetings, trail kids and coaches and, and parents. Uh, Coach JD here. Uh, one more time with you. I've presented a, a couple of videos from the comfort of my home uh, with the goal of helping to introduce us all to the sport of orienteering and more specifically to uh, trail kids ski orienteering. We had a great uh, trail kids orienteering program last fall. Um, I think a lot of those kids are in the, the ski program as well. They're going to be our our mentors for the new kids as well. So it's great to have everybody, uh, beginners and experienced alike, um, be part of the program. So today in this short video, I'd, I would like to um, introduce you to a few things outside, some of the equipment um, and some of the procedures we'll use to get through the, the orienteering events during our evening trail kids programs. To start with, I just wanna show you a little bit of the equipment. Orienteering in terms of equipment uh, is really pretty simple and easy. Um, and I'm going to point out a few of the things that are important for us. Uh, maybe the first and most important is this flag. This orange and white flag is called a control. And that is what you're looking for when you're going through the course. Um, you're looking for the next control, and then the next one after that, and the next one after that. And it will always be an orange and white flag. And for the um, Trail Kids Skio, there's going to be a letter attached to it. You can see that letter. Um, in this case, it's an S. Um, and one of the tricks of the trade or tricks of the events will be to, um, as you go through the course, to memorize the letters that you find. And that will help us know you found them. Uh, more on that in a moment. Some of the other equipment. So this is the control flag. Um, in regular orienteering, oftentimes a, a, uh, a common piece of equipment or tool is a compass. I'm not sure how well you can see these. Um, there's two types. This, this one in this hand. It's called a thumb compass and actually straps on your thumb. It's very handy, you don't have to hold anything. This is a more traditional compass, usually uh, it has a little lanyard you put around your neck. Either way, um, a compass is helpful when you're reading a map um, and knowing which way is north or which way you're going. Another important piece of equipment is your COVID mask. So wear that as directed. Um, oftentimes in the fall program, kids, this is a little whistle kids would carry a whistle in case they got lost in the woods. Um, you're not going to get lost, I promise you. Okay, but it is, um, when you're out in the woods, it's a good idea to have a whistle in case you do get in trouble. Um, you blow the whistle and someone will come to help you. Um, another piece of equipment that we will not be using, but it's very common for orienteering, this is called an e-stick. It'll wrap around your wrist, and when you get to a control, you'll punch a little electronic box that proves you've been there. We are not going to use that method for trail kids, but for, um, for the ski -o, because I don't want you to have to mess with your fingers. We're going to keep your fingers warm. So we've got another method to prove you were there. And then probably the single most important piece of equipment or tool you're going to have is your map. You cannot orienteer without a map. And I showed you in more detail in a previous video about the maps. But you, you have to have a map. You'll, the maps will be given to you at the start of each event in a plastic bag, bunch them up and ski like that. And, and, but if you drop it, you have to go back and get it because you will not know where you're going without your map. That's the most important piece of equipment in orienteering is your map. Okay, so that's, um, that's the equipment you're gonna need. Um, I wanna just demonstrate what, uh, kind of how we're gonna start an event and, um, and move through the course and then finish the event. Um, each team will have a designated start time um, and we'll probably break teams into smaller groups depending on skill and age level um, we may have groups that um, each group has a coach with them um, the more experienced people will send out in smaller groups uh, with the coaches uh, sweeping up behind them okay um, but at your, at your designated start time I will distribute a map to everyone um, we encourage everyone to take a map because that's how you learn to read maps um, some of you may not want to carry a map, and that's okay, but at least look on with somebody else's map. Somebody's got to carry a map. Um, and then when, when we're ready and you've got your map, um, the first thing I'm going to instruct you to do is to orient your map. Know which way you're facing. And on the map, there'll be a, the start will be located, and that's where you'll be standing. Um, and you want to, to figure out where you are on the map and which way you're going to go. So you would orient your map. In this case, I may want to face the trailhead building and then I would hold my map so that the trailhead building is right in front of me and if I do that 
and then I find where the first control is, and in this case, it's directly behind me on the map. So I know that to go to number one, I have to go that way. If I held my map upside down, it would tell me to go that way, and I'd end up in the parking lot. So that's not good. So holding your map properly is very important, orienting your map. So I'll give you your map, figure out where you are, figure out which way is number one, and then we'll say, ready, set, go. And your group will take off, and you'll ski to the first control. The first thing I do is look at what that letter on the control. In this case, it's a T. So here's your, your uh, challenge. You have to remember that. So at control number one, it was a T. Now you've got a group of kids, take turns, memorizing letters, whatever it takes. You're, you're probably gonna have only between five and 10 controls. So that's five and 10 letters to remember. Eventually those letters are gonna spell a word or a phrase. When you get back to the finish line, you're gonna report to me what the word or phrase was, and that's gonna tell me you found all the letters um, or you found all the controls. Now you could cheat and you get you know half of the letters and then you guess what the word is. Um, that's on you. If you want to do that, uh, there's no rules, but um, the full challenge is to get to all of the controls. So I encourage you to do that. Um, okay, so uh, that's how we're going to prove we got to a control. Now I would just like to summarize with a few key points. Um, number one, when you get the map, orient the map so you know which direction you're looking and where is number one. You'll have to do the same thing when you get to number one to decide which way is number two and so on and so on. Um, another key point um, is to hustle between controls. Don't dawdle, don't just stroll around. I encourage you to, to use your best ski technique, whether you're, it's a classic day or a skating day, use your best technique. Um, if it's a day where you're focusing on, on technique with no poles, it makes carrying the map easier, doesn't it? Um, so you can, you can do this with no poles as well. The courses will be suitable for any of that. Um, there'll be hills along the way, you'll be on some flats, some ups, some downs, so you'll get a chance to, to practice all your different technique, um, but hustle through the courses. Now, a very important thing is that, kind of the only real rule, is that you know these, these trails all have a one-way direction, designated one-way direction. You need to stick with that rule, um, which can be challenging, which will challenge you to decide what's the best way to get to the next control. The next control might be quite close, but you'd have to ski backwards on the trail. That's against the rules. So figure out on your map, what's gonna be my quickest way to get to that next control by going the correct direction. And it is legal to go off the course. Um, behind me, there's a little hill. I'm on the groom trail right now, and at the top of that hill, there's another groom trail. The next con control could be up there. Well, I can come here and I can either ski up that hill and when you're off course, you can go in any direction you want to. Or if it's really steep or rocky or whatever, I can take my skis off and run up there. But you have to carry your skis with you. At all times, you have to have your skis with you. So if I run up there, um, I can't leave the skis down here because that's how I'm gonna get to the next one. I have to take the skis with me, punch that control or read the letter, uh, put the skis back on and then move on to the next one. So there's a few places where you could cut across, get off the trail, and it might be your smartest, best move. They call orienteering um, cunning running or, or smart running because you really, it adds a dimension to getting from one place to another. You have to, you have to be wise and smart about what's, what's your strategy. So that's sort of what it's gonna look like. Um, the best way to learn is not from these videos, but to get out here and do it. So I look forward to, to when we can connect very soon to do that. All right, thanks very much.